Who's hosting this show? Hi, this is Amy Lewis. This is Beers Unplugged. Hi, this is Amy Lewis. We're back with another awesome episode of Engineers Unplugged. We've got Steve and Robert, and we're going to be talking about big data, big topics. So Steve, tell us what we're talking about today. Excellent. Thank you, Amy. Okay, so really we want to talk a little bit about the common platform architecture. And I want to take this as a little different spin. Robert, I understand you've got a lot of uh, UCS servers, right? But my understanding is you have zero blades in your environment, like well over 500 servers, but none of those are blade servers. Can you tell us a little bit about that and why you don't have any blade servers when you've got UCS? Sure, of course. Thanks, Steve. So one of the things about big data is it's big. It's really, really big. And it doesn't get any smaller. When you've got a blade platform, it's really good if you're doing condensed compute on a single uh, system. But if you've got a lot of local storage, if you've got a lot of data that you need to handle in real time, you really need the storage close to the compute. And that's why blades aren't quite the right fit. And we go with the rack mount servers instead. So you can get eight to 24 drives or more in a single server, and then you get a couple hundred servers. So eventually it adds up to real data, real big data. So that's, yeah, that's why we're not doing blades. Okay, so you're telling me that a rack mount server works under UCS and you just need a bunch of hard drives instead of just having a small blade server, right? So, so show us what you mean here. So I take it this is a, 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 two, a two RU rack mount server, so a C240, right? And you've got lots of hard drives in here, so 24 hard drives, right? Mm -hmm. So big data, lots of data, lots of spindles. So, so you've got this over and over. 500, you have 500 C-Series servers. Okay, no, wait, wait. I thought there was a limitation of 160 servers in C-Series. I'm sorry, in UCS. Yes, there is actually. However, it is a temporary limitation. It's sort of a speed bump. You deal with UCS servers in the form factor of a pod or domain, and that's a single management point uh, marketing has a term for it, I can't say it or I'll go up in smoke. Uh, but you've basically got that framework, that set of hardware that's a unique unit. However, you can have a lot of those. And you can manage them in individual pods, 160 servers at a time with what's called UCS Manager. I've got the bracelet even. Uh, it's the magical bracelet that lets me manage 160 servers from one display. Uh, almost used the term, oh my. Uh, but then if you get over that, like let's say you get to five, six, seven hundred, ten thousand that you want to run under UCS Manager, you put a layer on top of it called UCS Central, which is like a manager of managers. And from that, you can look at everything that's in every individual pod. So let's say we've got another pod over here. We'll change this to 160. So this is pod one, this is pod two, this is pod 500. So then you've got 500 times 160, which is a lot of servers. And then you just talk upstream to UCS Central. And from this point, oh. And from the point of UCS Central, you've basically got all of your inventory. You've got all of your fault monitoring. If a single DIM fails in any of these 80,000 servers, you can track it down, you can identify it, you can get a serial number, you can put in a TAC case to get it replaced, uh, you can find systems that are down. One of the really cool things about UCS Manager and UCS Central is you can track down machines that have failed hardware before you put them into service. Um, do you know how you do that? Actually, um, I think I do, right? So if, if I'm going to deploy a server, I can actually look at what I've got within that server. So specifically, we call this a, um, a um, wow. A pool. A pool, yes. A, a, a qualification pool. <laughs> and we qualify the servers by the number of CPU that we have in them. So if it's got you know two CPU of a specific type, how many DIMMs, how many hard drives. So we talk about this being big data, right? Let's assume it's a, a Hadoop environment. So maybe you've got data nodes, and then you've got um, uh, you know, the different components within that environment, you're going to build these pools of resources based on the number of DIMMs or the number of CPUs and then apply a specific service profile. So how does that actually help when you start looking at this and you start building these environments? How has UCS, uh, specifically C-Series under UCSM, helped you in a deployment environment? 
Well, step one is that you can uh, assign a pool and have a qualification policy for it, and then you can add 80,000 servers and you don't have to apply individual policies to each one. They pick it up from the pool, the pool is associated with a profile template, and a new profile gets created for each server that matches. Now another benefit that you have is that if something doesn't match, like the 64 gig server uh, has a bad dim, it's only showing 56 gig, it's not going to get a service profile because it doesn't match the pool qualification. So when you deploy 80,000 and you see 79,999 servers, you know one is wrong. You can track it down because it's not associated with the policy, and then you can go find it and fix the memory, put it in the pool, it comes up. You know, instead of what used to take days, weeks, months, now it takes hours, maybe a day. Excellent, thanks. Okay, we know what time it is now. <clears throat> We've never before attempted this on Engineers Unplugged, but as big data and with a big whiteboard, I think it's big unicorn challenge time. I want you to draw the biggest unicorn we've ever seen on Engineers Unplugged. You might have to work together. Go, go. Wow. <laughs> wow. That is awesome. Big data, big unicorn. Don't be afraid. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Steve. That was really cool. We'll see you next time on Engineers Unplugged.